So welcome everybody to this latest A2 video on 162 maths and in this video we'll be going over A2 statistics with a focus on normal and binomial distribution with approximations and going through some four exam style questions. So let's have a look at these exam style questions. Now the key thing to remember when you're looking with binomial distribution with normal approximations or normal distribution with binomial approximations is just recognizing the wording of the questions. Now when you're dealing with normal distribution you're looking at words involving mean and standard deviation and then finding the probabilities. Then with binomial distributions, you're looking at sample sizes and you're looking at probability of a success and also one or two outcomes, either a success or a failure, and there's never really a third option. So let's have a look at this first question. So it says, Elizabeth Elizabeth's Bakery makes brownies. It is known that the mass of X grams of brownies may be molded by a normal distribution. 10% of the brownies have a mass of less than 30 grams. 80% of the brownies have a mass greater than 32.5 grams. And the first part is asking us to work out the mean and standard deviation for seven marks. Now again, with these types of questions, Again, you tend to find that the approximation questions will never be a standalone question. They will usually form part of a previous part. So the, the, the approximation part will generally be the latter parts of an exam question rather than a, in its, a question in its own entirety. So looking at this particular question, so with A, what we need to do is we need to find mu and sigma. Now for this, what we need to look at is where we can start by recognizing the bits of information that we have been given. So we know that 10% of the mass of the brownies is less than 30 grams. So if I was to draw a little sketch, that 10% is going to be here. And so that there is 0 0.1. And this value here is going to be 30 with my mean being there. Now I know that the mean is going to be greater than 30 because I'm looking at 10% less than. So I know that this 30 is going to be the left hand side of this normal distribution graph. So what I then need to do is first of all find the z value. So find the z value. Now for this what I need to do is on the FX991EX calculator on the Casio, which is standard for this course, is if I go to menu, then option 7 distribution, and then go to normal CD. Uh, sorry, inverse normal, and which is option number three. And then what I will then want to do is the area I'm going to type in is going to be 0 0.1. The sigma is going to be 1, and mu is going to be 0. Now, if I enter those values in, so 0 0.1, um, I've got sigma as being uh, 1, and mu as being 0. And that gives me an area of, so z equals minus 1.281551638. So from this, what I've then got is that minus 1.28155 is going to be equal to x, which is 30, minus mu over sigma. So that there is one of my equations. Now what I then need to do is repeat this, but for the second bit of information that I've got, so this is going to be where I draw my normal distribution curve. Now it says that 80% have a mass greater than 32. So this bit here is 32.5 and this bit here is going to be 80%. So then what I then need to do is work out what the Z value is going to be, the equivalent to 32.5. So again, I'm going to go for inverse norm, the area is going to be 0 0.2 because that's what the area on the left is. My mu is going to be 0 and my sigma is going to be 1. So if I then go back and just type in that information, I get an answer of that z equals minus 0 0.84162847. Now, from this, I can then write this as an equation. So I've got minus 0 0.8416 equals and it's going to be 32.5 minus mu over sigma and that there is my second equation. Now what I then need to do is write this as a simultaneous equation and so what I get is I'm going to get minus 1.28155 sigma equals 30 minus mu and then for the second equation I've got minus 0 0.84 
one six sigma equals thirty two point five minus mu. Now this then becomes solving a, like a simultaneous equation in which you should get sigma is being five point six eight and mu being thirty seven point three for the seven marks. Now it is really important you do show you're working up for this, but again going through those steps of initially getting these two equations is probably going to get you to five marks and solving the simultaneous equation should give you the rest. So what I've then got is, let me just write this down, so I've got x is normally distributed with a mean of 5.68 and no, the mean of, I've got that the wrong way around, it's going to be 37.3 and a sigma value of 5.68 squared. So that's my parameters set. Now for b, it's then asking me, so let me just get rid of all of this which obviously you shouldn't be in your exam. So the next question then says, find the probability, and this is basically a bog standard normal distribution question. And now that we've got our parameters, it is just gonna be exactly that. Now, in terms of the question BI, it says, what's the probability of it not equaling 0, uh, 35? Now, obviously with normal distribution questions, you can only have cumulative values so that is just going to be, so if the probability of equaling 35 is going to be 0, the probability of not equaling 35 is just simply going to equal 1. Now for part 2, again, all I need to do is I can use my calculator for this. So if I'm going to go to menu, then distribution, then I'm going to go to, this is an arrow, then I'm going to go to normal CD. And once I've gone to normal CD, um, I then need to enter the following values. Now in terms of the lower, well I'm just going to go for, if I just do a little sketch of what BII looks like, what they're looking at me trying to find, well my mean is 37.3, 35 is on this side, so what they're looking for me to find is this area here. So the lower bound I'm just going to go for an extreme value, but typically what they tend to do is 37.3 uh, minus five lots of standard deviation but again you can actually type this into your calculator and that would be absolutely fine or you just go for a ridiculously small number like minus 20,000 that'd be absolutely fine the upper value is going to be 35 and my Sigma is 5.68 and my mu is 37.3 and if I type that all into my calculator I should get an answer of 0 0.344 to 3 sig fig. Now moving on to part C, it says brownies are baked in batches of 13. And it says that calculate the probability that in a batch of brownies no more than three brownies are less than 35 grams. You may assume that the best of the brownies is independent to each other. Now independent basically means this is now combining it to a binomial. Now for a binomial whenever you start these types of questions you always want to specify what the parameter is going to be. Now we've already used x so I'm going to go for y. We'll go for b. Now here we've got a sample size of 13 and the probability of a brownie weighing less than 35 grams is actually what we've worked out previously which is 0.344 and this is the answer from BII. Now from this what the question is asking me is no more than 3 so it's asking me what's the probability that y is going to be less or equal to 3 so again all I need to do is on the calculator go for menu then distribution this time I'm going to go for uh, binomial distribution so let's check on the calculator what mode that is so scroll down and it's bin CD or binomial CD and then we want variable and what we want then to enter the values we've got X equals 3 N equals 13 and P equals 0.344 and if I just quickly just type that in you should get an answer of 0.29375 blah 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 which then rounds up to 0.294 to 3 sig big and there is our answer
Now, looking at question two, it says that the diameter of D millimeters of an American pool ball, it may be modeled by a normal random variable with a mean of 57.15 and a standard deviation of 0 0.04. And the question is asking us to do this. Now, question eight is a pretty much a bog standard normal distribution question. So let's go about answering that. So in terms of A, again, what you always do is set the parameters. So we know that D is normally distributed with a mean of 57.15 and a standard deviation of 0.04 and so that's there. Now it's really important you always start off your questions by writing the parameters and make sure to include the variance not the standard deviation or standard deviation squared which equals the variance. Now in terms of this for part i what I'm actually wanting to work out is well if this is 57.15 I want the probability of 57.2 so it's this region here and that value there is at 57.2 so on the calculator, I'm going to do menu, distribution, then I'm going to go to normal, CD, and then in terms of the variables, let's just quickly do that, uh, normal CD, and then the lower, again, you can enter as 57.15 minus 5 lots of standard deviation, or just do a random small number like 20,000. Your upper is going to be 57.2, your sigma is 0 0.04, and your mu is 57.15. If I just quickly just type that all in, um, I should get an answer of. 0.89435022263, which rounds up to be 0.8943 sig. Then looking at part two, uh, which I'll just do over here. So again, exactly the same in terms of parameters. So I'm going to go for distribution, uh, normal, CD, and then the lower is 57.1 the upper is going to be 57.2 uh, sigma is 0.04 mu is 57.15 and so typing all of that in so 57.1 7.2 should get an answer of 0.8 Seven eight eight seven zero zero four five two seven, which to three sig fig is not point eight seven nine. Let's just write that down. So looking at question two b, it says that a box contains sixteen of these pool balls. Given that the balls may be regarded as a random sample, determine the probability that all sixteen have diameters of less than fifty seven point two. So for this, let's first of all do a bit of space, and hopefully yours is going to be presented a little bit better than mine in terms of space. So for B, let's set up a parameter. So let's go for Y is binomially distributed. Now it doesn't really matter what let you choose, could be Y, could be G, could be whatever you want. Um, but we're just, as long as we write, is assumed to be binomially distributed with a sample size of 16, and a probability of it being less than 57.2 is our answer in part A, I, which is 0.894, and that's A, I. Now from this, what the question is asking is all 16, so I want the probability that x or y equals 16. Now for this, because I don't want 16 or less, I want exactly 16. So for this, what I need to go is distribution, then go to um, binomial CD, uh, PD, then I want variable, and then once I'm into that mode, I then go into x equals 16, n equals 16, and p equals 0.894. So typing all of that in, I get an answer of 0 0.16649465695. Rounded up gives me 0 0.1663F. 
Now, moving on to question three. Again, question three looks very, very similar to the previous question. You do find that a lot of these questions are going to be repeated in terms of style. It says that a draft extruder for doors and windows is sold in rolls of nominal length of 10 meters. The actual length X meters of the draft extruder on a roll may be modeled by a normal distribution with a mean of 10.2 and a standard deviation of 0.15. And the question is asking us to work out where x is less than 10.5 and between 10.5 and 10. So let's have a look at working through this particular question. So in terms of a, which I'll try and do here, let's first of all set up the parameter. So I know that x is normally distributed with a mean of 10.2 and standard deviation of 0.15. So that's my parameter set. Now in terms of what I'm looking for, I'm looking for where it's less than 10.5. So if this is 10.2, 10 10.5 is going to be on the right of that. And I want less than, so I want this area here. So again, going on the calculator, I'm going to go for distribution. I'm going to go for normal CD. And then from there, my lower limit is going to be, again, I can do the mean minus five lots of the standard deviation 0.15 or a ridiculously small number and my upper is going to be 10.5 my mu is going to be 10.2 and my sigma is 0.15 so entering those variables in i get uh, 10. and I should get an answer of 0.9772498868 which is going to be that to 3 sig big then looking at part 2 so again just doing a quick little diagram of what it is I'm actually trying to find so 10 is on this side 10.2 is here and 10.5 there so I'm looking for this area here Again, I'm going to go for distribution, normal CD, and then the lower, in this case, is 10. The upper is 10.5. The sigma is 0.15, and mu is 10.2. So typing that all in, I should get an answer of 0.886 to three sig big. Now moving on to part B, what we should find is, and let's read the question, so it says a, number, a customer randomly selects six 10 meter uh, rolls of draft excluder. Calculate the probability that all six selected contain more than 10 meters of draft excluder. So for this, what we need to do is first of all set the parameter. So again, I'm gonna call it Y. Is binomially, binomially distributed we've got a sample size of six now don't let the 10 meter fool you because I know it's a number but it's not really involved in the question and what we want is the probability of it being more than 10 now the probability of more than 10 we've not quite calculated but that's something that we do need to calculate in terms of this so the probability of it being more than 10 of being uh, more than 10 is where we go for the normal uh, CD our lower is going to be 10 our upper is going to be a crazy big number our mu is going to be 10.2 and our sigma is going to be 0.15 so if I just type that all into my calculator I've got 10 I've got a ridiculously big number I've got sigma as being the rest, and that should give me a probability of 0 0.909, I would say, to 3 sig fig. So that's my parameters, and the question's asking me that all six, I want the probability that x equals six. Now, once I've got that, what I then need to do is go to menu, distribution, then binomial PD, and then from there I just need to enter the values and I want variable and then from there 
I've got x equals 6, n equals 6, and p equals 0 0.909. Or if you want to use the exact value, that's fine. So 6, 6, and 0 0.909. And I should get an answer of 0 0.564 to 3 sig. Now looking at question four, it says that garden canes have a length uh, that are normally distributed with a mean of 208.5 and a standard deviation 2.5. Show that the probability of a length randomly selected, uh, rather randomly selected cane being between 205 and 210 is 0 0.645, correct, to three decimal places. So for A, let's first of all set up the parameter. So X is normally distributed with a mean of 208.5 and a standard deviation of 2.5 and what we want to work out is the probability that x is between 205 and 200 and that's what we're looking for now again in terms of using our calculator it is worth four marks so you kind of want to show in terms of a diagram what we're looking at like so we've got 205 and we've got 210 so here we've got menu normal uh, distribution in terms of CD actually no I've messed that up let's go for normal then distribution ah. then we're going to normal CD and then we've got lower as being 205 that's my point there upper is 210 our mu is 208.5 and our sigma is 2.5 and if I type that all into my calculator which I'm going to do right now uh, in which I've got 205, 210, uh, 2.2 and I should get an answer of 0 0.6449 etc which is 0 0.645 UED and now in terms of in working out of this personally i think this is a an old exam question where use of technology wasn't there typically speaking i would try and show some working out if you've been taught the more mathematical way of using the z values and working out using the standardized formula then that probably be the best option but i think in current times i think it's a bit of a duff question in terms of being worth four marks and um, because a lot of it you can do on your calculator but in terms of maximizing your marks, I would always start by writing down the parameters, write down exactly what it is, try and represent it in a diagram, maybe stating down what you're actually typing into your calculator and then showing what it equals. But personally speaking, I do believe that this is a bit of a duff question uh, for it to be worth four marks on a sort of modern um, exam. So moving on to B, it says 10 canes are selected at random. Calculate the probability that exactly six of these canes are have lengths between 205 and 210. So set this parameter, but binomially distributed with a sample size of 10. Our mean is what we've just worked out, which is 0 0.645, and that's from A. And what the question is asking for is exactly six. So that's what we want to work out. So again, what we're going to do is menu, distribution, we're going for binomial CD, uh, sorry, PD, change that to P, and we want variable, and then the parameters we're going for, N equals 10, X equals 6, and P equals 0 0.645, and if I type that all into my calculator, it should end up with a value of, um, let's quickly adjust that, and so I've got 6, 10, 0.645, get an answer of 0 0.200, so 240, 23, sig, sig, and there we are going.